So we're joined here on Next by Steve House, who just finished his term as the chairman of Colorado's Republican Party. Congratulations on your recent liberation. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> so you've said that you're not going to make another run for governor in 2018. Correct. You want to go work for the Trump administration? It's possible. Okay. Doing what? I, my expertise is in healthcare. I've been in healthcare for 33 years, so trying to figure out the complex problem that health, healthcare presents, it's not as simple as repealing and replacing Obamacare. There's a lot more there than that. What is the piece that needs more prominence? I think an understanding of how the demographics of aging and the engagement that patients have to get involved in their own health care. We've tried to do that, I think, with deductibles sort of drive that a little bit. I mean, people put off care because of the cost of their deductibles. That's the wrong idea. How do we get people to actually take care of themselves? Because if we don't do that, the problem doesn't get any easier. When you watched the spectacle that was the failure of the repeal and replace plan, what were you thinking as you watched that from the couch? I think it was the wrong message. I think we have to, as Republicans, we have to talk about people's actual health care, not just the cost and the insurance side of health care. There's an impact when you do insurance on how health care actually plays out for you as an individual. We didn't talk about any of that. I think we made a mistake. We've got to do a much better job of talking about how health care impacts the individual. So you're talking about a message. Was there a problem with the plan itself when you looked at it? Yeah, it didn't go far enough, right? I mean, you have this paradigm where you have essential health benefits, which says, I'm going to guarantee you're covered for a certain number of things, whether you need them or not. And then you have the issue of how do I repeal individual mandates? If you do those two things together, a whole bunch of people could opt out of health care that don't really need anything but primary care on a regular basis. Well, that then makes all these risk pools we talk about, sure. makes them so much worse that the problem actually might have gotten worse. And I think they had to get that resolved before they tried to do it. Who is the face of the Republican Party in Colorado today? That's an interesting question. Probably Cory Gardner. I think that's a fair to say that Cory is that guy. Mm -hmm. What is the state of the party now? I mean, uh, certainly Donald Trump lost Colorado, saw some other electoral victories, uh, kept Democrats from sweeping the state legislature. What's mm -hmm. the state of the party? I think it's okay. I mean, I think, you know, if you look back and see 2009, back in 2009, we had the AG's office and we had two congressional seats on the federal side. That's it. Today, you know, we've got four of seven congressional seats, one U.S. Senator, we have the state Senate, we have the Treasurer AG and the SOS, and we have about 60 plus percent of all the county positions. So it's improving, but we need to take a big step in 2018. What is that step? We've got to win the governor's race. I mean, we, we, if we don't win the governor's race, it'll be 65 years, 64 years. We've only won twice. That just tells us that there's something wrong with how we position ourselves with an electorate that appears to be fairly conservative. How do you find a winning candidate? They, there will be many Republicans in this field. I think it's going to be a candidate that appeals to the unaffiliated voters. Ironically, we have a primary now where we're going to have unaffiliated voters in it. I think whoever comes out of that will probably be more ready to win the general election than if unaffiliated voters hadn't been part of it. Now, myself and Rick Palacio at the time, and I think Morgan Carroll and Jeff Hayes now, none of us like the idea of unaffiliated voters voting in a primary. But now that they're there, I think it's a good opportunity for candidates to position themselves well. So it doesn't sound like you think that the Republican Party should opt out of the open primary system and just go the caucus assembly route? Absolutely not, because if you opt out, then you're delivering a message that you are not interested so much in what the voters have said. And the voters pay for primaries. They decided they wanted this to happen. I think the parties have to embrace that reality. I don't think there's any legal position the party could take to prevent it now. You don't think that they could opt out not. if they want to? Well, okay. they, could, no, they could opt out, Yeah, but they can't stop 108 any other way. Gotcha. So that would mean then that you're probably looking at a less conservative candidate in, in the general. What did you think the impact was of Ken Salazar, the former senator, deciding not to run in the Democratic primary? I thought it was probably a wise decision on his part. I don't think he was well positioned with the youth movement we've seen in Boulder and Denver and how big of an impact that has on the Democrat Party. I actually don't know that open primaries are going to drive us to a more moderate candidate because when you get to a primary, we may see, and I know that Ian Silvieri and others believe this too, that you could have the edges of both parties that are unaffiliated, hard right, hard left, vote in that primary. We could fr frankly have harder candidates right and left than we could otherwise. Let's dig into that a little bit. So what you're saying is if you have a crowded open primary, then everybody's got a smaller piece of the pie and you could end up with a more liberal or a more conservative candidate. Absolutely, could happen. So when you look at the field of names that are being talked about, Republicans and Democrats, who do you think is not getting enough attention at this point? I think on the Democrat side, 
He sort of solved that a little bit the other day with Mike Johnston, who I think Mike Johnston's a very good candidate. He's a very likable guy. He's very bright. He's got education as background. He had a lot of money raised in that first quarter. It surprised a lot of people. I think his name will get more mention now. He was in the race, but I think people look at Ed Perlmutter and they were looking at Joe or uh, Ken Salazar as a possibility. So I think his name's going to come up more often now. Mm -hmm. in and, the process. In, and in the Republican field, all the potential people might who jump in. Who are you watching for? There's going to be a number of business guys, right? So we've heard names like Jack Graham, Doug Robinson, Barry Farah, a few others, Kent Theory and others that could run on the Republican side. It's going to be interesting to see how the more traditional politicians, Walker Stapleton, George Brockler, who announced today, versus the business guys play out. Any one of those business guys, especially in an era where Donald Trump won an election as a complete outsider, could surprise us. All right. Steve House, wish you the best of luck in future endeavors. Are you ruling out a potential run for any office in the future, or just not no, this I time? No, I would not. I would not rule out a potential run. Just not governor in 18. Smart man. All right. Thank you so much for stopping thank by. Thank you, pal. Good to see you.